We are taught in middle school and high school that learning about fossils, that carbon dating proves that these fossils are going to be millions, billions of years old. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit on why that doesn't work? And how would that be explained over the only 40 days of the flood? Let me just give you a nutshell answer for, for both of those. First of all, um, we wouldn't call it carbon dating, that, but radioisotope dating is supposed to give us millions of years age assignments. But we know that that's wrong because when we use um, isotope systems, as, uh, which are clock-like systems, when we use those to provide age estimates of rocks that we saw formed, rocks of known age, known by eyewitnesses, uh, the isotope age assignments for those rocks of known age are almost always wrong, and they're almost always vastly inflated. So for example, rocks from uh, Hawaii, basalt that formed uh, in the 1800s, uh, you know, gives uh, isotope ages uh, using argon, argon systems from something like uh, 200,000, uh, and to some cases uh, the same rock was sampled, uh, 24 million, but it's a, just a 200-year-old rock. And we have rock from, um, from Mount St. Helens that formed in the, uh, right after the 1980 eruption. And the isotope systems there came back with 340,000 to 2.4 million. Anyway, totally wrong. And so if they're wrong for rocks of known age, why would we trust them for rocks of unknown age? And then the second question is about the rock layers. And you have the apparent evolution of, like, say, an ammonite in this layer, and it's less wiggly here, it's got these wiggles and it's septi. Less wiggles, more wiggles, less wiggles, and this is supposed to be a progression of evolution. Um, by the way, I didn't say that the flood um, deposited these rock layers in 40 days and 40 nights, but uh, I would say that it did happen in one year because the scripture gives us that the flood lasted for a year. In fact, after 150 days, that's when water covered all the high hills under the whole heavens. Uh, Genesis chapter 7. So 150 days is the high point, and then you still have water sloshing around for months after that. So this is a 370-day uh, process that covered the globe with successive layers. And so, um, so why do you get the fossil distribution, fossils in lower layers, specific ones, and other fossils in higher layers? In general, we see a pattern of sea creatures, shallow marine, wetlands, and then dry land creatures at the very top. And so evolutionists say that this is a progression of evolution, and this is why we, dry land creatures, humans, fossilized at the very top, came from fish, because these are supposed to be supposedly millions of years ago, and then the fish evolved into uh, other vertebrates, all the other vertebrates. Uh, but we would say, uh, in the context of, um, of the flood narrative, that the lower layers have deep sea creatures in them, and then shallow marine, and then the progression, because this is not a, a sign, a signal of evolutionary progression, but rather it's a sign and signal of the progression of the, of the uh, ecological zones that were buried during the flood year. So the first creatures to get buried were the creatures that were already at the bottom of the sea and couldn't get away, trilobites. Uh, and then as the flood waters rose in successive phases, uh, month after month, they would have gone higher and higher up onto the margins of the pre-flood continent, which we think was like a Pangaea. And then finally, the last creatures to get deposited would have been the high ground living creatures in the flood. And that's why we see the camels and uh, deer and things like that buried in the uppermost uh, layers. And as far as the micro variations in the, in the different, um, uh, uh, like ammonites, uh, I think a lot of those are contrived. Um, but they could also represent, um, contrived in other words, um, it's like the horse series. When I was a kid it was a famous, like evolution is true because these series of, of horses evolved, but it was contrived because they said, look, it's a small, medium, small in this layer, medium, and then big horse, you know, three-toed, two-toed, one-toed, th you know, they have this progression. But in reality, the, in the technical, that's what the textbook shows, the stories the textbook shows. But in the technical literature, researchers are actually finding the one-toed horse down here and the big horse down here and the little horse up there. It's all jumbled up. So I think if you were to look deeper, you'd find different kinds of fossils out of place. Out of, out of, and so that's what they find. But when they do find it, they don't always let us know.